Now I brought back a very large branch from this fallen birch branch. I uh, strapped it to the top of my car and brought it back because it's a great wood and we're going to show you how we're going to use some of that wood. And the bark, uh, especially this time of year in the uh, late winter, early spring as the uh, tree is trying to renourish itself to produce leaves, uh, there's a lot of sugar in the bark and in the cambium, and uh, this is a great source of vitamin C, uh, trace minerals. Uh, it's an, an excellent anti-inflammatory and analgesic. Uh, it reduces swelling and reduces fever. It's an excellent astringent for skin conditions, itches, rashes, uh, just dry skin. It's also an extraordinary antioxidant and immune booster. So anytime you find birch specimens, uh, treat them with a great deal of respect. Uh, obviously, the birch is a great the birch bark is a great fire starter, but uh, the cambium and the the bark overall makes an exceptional tea, and it's great for you. So let's move on with this project and show you what else we're going to do with this birch specimen. So I ran across some beautiful river birch uh, branch that was broken off in a storm. And we're going to get as much value out of this branch as we can. You can imagine what we might be making from this in an upcoming video. But for now, we're going to take off the bark and preserve it for birch bark tea. The newer growth branches, the bark hasn't quite uh, started peeling on its own yet. As it swells and grows, it will peel like paper. So we're going to get that started peeling. This is great bark because it's very green. It's holding a lot of the new moisture from the water that's being pulled up. So as you're peeling this, you want to try to get just below the cambium, uh, as little of the wood fiber as possible. You want to make your your peels or your shavings as small as possible the more surface area exposed especially after drying and that will help expedite drying uh, you're going to get more of the nutrients from the cambium and from your shavings when you're boiling it making tea or when you're uh, soaking that to make tinctures so small shavings are best keep them as small fine as possible This river birch branch came down at a perfect time because we had daytime temperatures that were above freezing in the 40s and nighttime temperatures well below 32. So there's a lot of nutrients that can be found in the bark and cambium of this branch wood. And so we want to retain as much of that as we can. Uh, now some of this branch that we're working from uh, obviously there's that papery birch bark and we're going to peel that aside that just peels right off and in fact you just want to peel that back and allow as much of it to peel off as you can and just set that aside because none of this is going to go to waste i'm going to put this into a bag and dry it and save it as a tinder source. And so that's gonna get me past that outer bark. And then we're gonna get down to the cork, or what we call the corky bark, uh, which is a secondary bark on the birch. And uh, that bark is what we're ideally, and, and you can see it best right here, it's literally a corky material. If I can... Uh, and this is extraordinary, uh, almost powdery. This is an extraordinary fire tinder. And so we're gonna hang on to that. And then what we've been working on doing is literally just shaving just beyond that. Let's see if we can peel some more of that back. It's really thick on this particular branch. And we're going to hang on to all of that. Now, if you get some of this into your uh, greener bark that we've set aside over here for our tea, 
that's fine. It's not going to hurt anything. Uh, I'll also use some of this to make a tincture. And of course, uh, for the tincture, we'll need it to be really dry. And so getting past that corky material, you can even use the back of your knife if you've got a 90 degree spine. And you can see, once you get that started, it just peels right back, nothing to it. And so now that gets us into the cambium and it's gonna be a greenish white and we can shave that and you'll know when you get down to the wood material, you can see there I'm getting to the wood, it's a very white to gray material. But what we want is that green, slightly less corky material. And that's what's gonna go into our, our tea stock and our tincture. And you can see it here, um, you got that green. And, and you just wanna, And again, this is a tree branch that's fallen, and so it, uh, I know it doesn't look like it probably on camera, but this is actually fairly wet still. And so we're going to get all this bark off. So we can save it for its medicinal purposes. And right there, there's a little wood in that. But we really want that cambium. That cambium can be dried and or even toasted. And after that cambium is toasted, you can pulverize that and grind it into a excellent flour. So if you wanted to dry or toast this and make a cambium flour, uh, it's going to be somewhat bitter, uh, but it can be mixed in. But it packs around five to 600 calories per pound. And uh, when you use it as a flour supplementally uh, or for coating maybe some edible greens that you might find, uh, it's a great way to put some calories as well as some nutrition into your survival diet. Now, of course, I want to mention in a survival situation, you do not want to eat just bark and make that the mainstay in your diet. Uh, there are high levels of tannin in this material. And if you, if you eat too much of it, especially if you've not been eating well on an empty stomach, uh, it's going to cause some stomach upset, gastrointestinal disturbance, and you're not going to be comfortable. In fact, it may even cause some diarrhea. So... Uh, keep that in mind. This is not your main source of nutrition, but it is certainly a great source of sugar and nutrition if you will find yourself in a survival situation. And it's certainly a skill uh, worth knowing and noting. So now that we've stripped uh, the greater part of this bark and cambium and inner bark, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take the uh, fire tinder material that we're setting aside. And by all means, every bit of this could be used for making tea or medicinal tea. Uh, some great benefits. We're going to put all this tinder bark just into a paper bag. And we're going to close that up. Uh, it's labeled birch. In this case, this is just our tinder bark. And we're going to set that aside. Uh, I really like the brown paper bags. Uh, put them in a dry place and they'll dry nicely. I'm going to go ahead and just set aside a little bit of this. And I'm going to boil that and make some birch tea. The rest of this is going to go into a brown paper bag. And probably what I'm going to do, I actually have the ovens running. Uh, we've got a barbecue event tomorrow, and one of our food trucks is going out for lunch. So I'll probably throw this in the oven this evening and dry it quickly, which you can do. Uh, you can use a dehydrator. Uh, you can put it in the sunlight and dry it. Uh, plenty of options there, but then it'll go right back into this bag. Uh, we'll put a clip on that, and then that'll be hung 
and stored for later use. So while tinkering out here in the shop, got some birch tea brewing. And we'll let that go for about 15 minutes. All right, so let's take a look at this natural birch bark tea. It's been steeping for a little over 15 minutes. And it looks wonderful. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to transfer this to a glass jar. I'm going to add a little honey to it. And I'm actually just putting this in the glass jar because I want you to see the beautiful color. I hope that the lighting in here allows the camera to capture that color but that is just a beautiful red and this is a great tasting tea even without any sweetener but I'm going to add my favorite just a spot of honey and I'll probably not finish this while it's hot I'll sip on it my favorite way to enjoy this is to let it cool and then I'll ice it and I'll have this during a movie tonight and so that's uh, birch bark tea with a spot of honey oh, it's hot that's refreshing, especially on a cool day like today. Some earthy tones, a little bit minty, uh, but really as smooth as any tea. And uh, very good for the immune system, good for the digestive system, and a great anti-inflammatory. And so that's a great tea uh, to enjoy when you're in the woods.